So it's Monday, July 15th. Show number 200, by the way. How about that? Congrats, guys. Really? Wow. What a moment. <laughs> oh. Standing O. A little standing O from Mortgage Mark. <clears throat> I think Smartless just celebrated their 200th podcast. Yeah. And you guys have only been doing this for like, I don't know, five weeks or something. That's right. On this day in 1799, French soldiers in Egypt discovered the Rosetta Stone, which proved instrumental in deciphering ancient Egyptian hieroglyph... Uh, hiero- you know what I'm going to say. Hieroglyphics? I don't know. Yeah. Words. You're, you were close enough. When Things. you say hieroglyphics and Rosetta Stone, the word cuneiform comes to mind. Okay. And I, I don't like that. know what that means. It was like the earliest form of written text. Yeah, and I believe it was like uh, blocks, right? I don't remember. Okay, well, let's look it up. I don't know what the Rosetta Stone even is. It's an app that helps you speak Spanish. Okay, so they discovered that <laughs> in 1799. On this day in 1945, Byron Nelson won his fifth and final major, the PGA Championship. The winner back then received five, $598. $5,000. slave. In war bonds. <laughs> war bonds? Yes. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Do you? Sounds good, though. Sounds like you're supporting America. You're essentially but loaning money to the government. Correct. That they can, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I remember uh, when I was a kid, like learning that uh, I had a bunch of bonds. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I have absolutely no idea what that means. Yeah. Can I rent a video with that? On this day in 1976, a 36-hour kidnap ordeal began. For 26 school children and their bus driver. This is 1976. Hmm. They're abducted in California by three gunmen, imprisoned in an underground cell. <clears throat> and eventually the kidnappers were caught and the captives escaped unharmed. They actually buried the bus with the kids inside it. No way. That's what they're saying? That's what they called the That's underground cell? That's what I cell? was under the impression of when I was eight years old when this went down, because I remember this vividly in the news and was terrified about it. you're a kid who might yes. get their school bus. Oh, my God. Yeah. Every kid. Kidnapped. Yeah. That was around that age at the time. That was, it, it had our attention for sure. That probably skewed the stats too. We always say, oh, there was more kidnappings back then. Now they may have trans, uh, the way they told the story to me was that they took their bus and buried it, but I think it was another bus that they transferred them in that was in fact buried underground. I think there's been a a docuseries on this, maybe on you know, Netflix or Hulu or something like that. In so it years. does say that they transferred them from the bus and then put them in a buried truck trailer. That's right. Yeah. At, at gunpoint, they had a ladder through a hatch, a buried truck trailer, and they <clears throat> they forced all the, the kids in there. And it was one of the most harebrained schemes that was come up with by, I think, two or three of the biggest morons that you could ever imagine. Yeah, it doesn't. What was the end goal? Ransom. Uh, ransom. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody made it out, though. I Damn. think. I don't think anybody died. Yeah, I'm not seeing any any deaths. Why don't yeah. you book Other someone? Than, like, book someone that was on that bus. Post traumatic stress. Wouldn't it be cool to talk to somebody who was on that bus? I what, mean, what did bus? California, boy, I'm gonna I'm gonna be totally honest with don't, you. Don't do it. He's kidding. None I of am the, not killing. None of kidding. these three. I'm by. None of these three guys could have kidnapped me. Mm. How old were the kids? Ten? Um, Six? Seven? This year says school, school children, so. I was yeah, it's under ten. And at the time, they were, the kidnappers were 24, 24, and 22. No chance, bro. Fourth grade me? <laughs> You're not taking me. On this day in 1973, Nolan Ryan... Through his second no hitter of the season, uh, the game also featured a legendary uh, baseball moment when Tigers first baseman Norm Cash, in his third at bat, came up to the plate with a table leg because uh, he couldn't hit Nolan Ryan with a bat. So he's just like that was the and then he laughed about baseball, and then he went back and got a bat. 
Yeah, so... And then he walked on four pitches. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. Nolan, Nolan couldn't find his own. Nolan had 11 walks and three wild pitches in that game and still got his no-hitter. I do think baseball doesn't get enough credit for its bits. It is the most bit-laden sport. It's primarily relegated to the minor leagues, Pre-1980s right? Pre-1980s probably too, right? Yeah, probably. But you got the old story of the uh, the old potato trick. Yeah. Where the guy, it was a hidden ball trick. And the uh, the catcher threw the ball, or the third baseman threw like a potato back to the pitcher. Like he literally had a potato. <laughs> where? <laughs> I don't know where he would keep it. And he threw it back to the pitcher, and then the uh, runner get, steps off a third, and he tags him because he's got the ball. Yep. And it, like that's a legendary story. Like, ah, the old... They oh, would. Oh, potato trick. You didn't even trick. know. You would have seen, like, the sour cream and the bacon is flying off it as you throw <laughs> I it. I don't think it was dressed. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was a big potato. But, uh, you know, like the little person, like the Eddie Goodell story. Mm-hmm. You don't have that in the NFL. Like, what if we just put a midget out here? Whoa. We would if, like, Belichick... If he if he had found a loop, you know he's like the last one that the did like a drop kick. It's like or the left handed punter, yeah, yeah, or the left footed punter, yeah. yeah, yeah. But if the NFL played 162 games a year, I bet we would. Yeah, you're probably right. You just really get bored. so bored. You're just like you ah. are. You're mathematically eliminated in like June. <laughs> yeah, and I still have to keep coming to work every day. Right. Let's let Spalding play quarterback next. No day. one's in the stands. <laughs> Let's get a big jug lady to run out and kiss the players. Uh, call her Morgana. Yeah. The kissing bandit. On this day in 1994, Chicago manager Gene Lamont requests the bat of Indians Albert Bell be checked for cork at Comiskey Park. This led to uh, Cork Gate, uh, where in fact, one of the Indians players crawled through the, uh, I don't know what you would call it. Scaffolding? No. Uh, catacombs. No. <sighs> Those are my two best shots, You're you're somehow crawling over the ceiling Uh into, like, the umpire's room. He dropped down through, like, a a vent, took the bat, replaced it with another bat, Mm -hmm. and then went back. And, like, later they were able to determine that he did that because it was, like, a different color bat that he replaced it with. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. It might have been Indians pitcher Jason Grimsley. It was. Grimsley took a bat belonging to Indians player Paul Sorrento and accessed the area above the false ceiling in the clubhouse, which I don't know if that really was the word that you were looking for. No, but but that sounds like it's probably the right one. And crawled across uh, with a flashlight in his mouth until he reached the umpire's room. Isn't that great? It's fantastic. I think it goes back to what I was just saying. Were you an Albert Bell guy? Oh, of course. What did he change his name to? Albert. It used to be Joey. He's Joey Bell. Okay. Early when he on. first came up, okay. he was Joey, but then he was an alcoholic, and uh, they were like, Wanted well, to... you got to change everything. They used to chant, his first name. chant Joey at uh, Old Arlington Stadium when he'd be out in left field. He got mad. He would get mad pretty he, easily. I think yeah. he would get mad, yeah. And I'm just saying, 2003 – the twelfth player ever to homer in his first All Star at bat was a Texas Ranger. The question is, who was that Texas Ranger? Two thousand three. What, what can, year? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, re- repeat the question. The twelfth player to ever home homer in his first All Star at bat. I'll give you even a hint. All Star at bat. I don't know if we need a hint. What do you say? All-Star. It was a game winning home run. No. Mm-hmm. Off of Eric Gagne. Off of Eric Gagne. Was he a third baseman? Mm-hmm. It was... Was it Blaylock? Mm-hmm. It was yeah. Hank Blaylock. Yeah! And Gagne... Look at, the, look at this group of baseball guys. Seam was, heads. Was that the year that Gagne right, hadn't, right, hadn't blown a save yet? <laughs> Is that right? He had like a save streak going or something, and Rangers fans were like, yeah, it's our boy. Yeah. Uh, today's birthday is we have Greg Williams is 66. Yeah. Hey, Hammer. This Greg Williams. They should not get a yard. He got five f***ing yards on a nine-man front. What game are we playing? Checkers? Chess? Putt-putt golf? We're playing f***ing football. Dame Lillard is 34. He's been to Milwaukee. Yeah. He has. 
He also authored one of the most iconic uh, sports images of our entire life. In the pile? The walk-off. Where he just like looked at the camera and was like, come on. <laughs> He's also, uh, I'm trying Jennifer. Do you guys know about I'm trying Jennifer? Vaguely. Uh, there's a very funny tweet where some lady tweeted to him like, hey, why don't you win a playoff series? <laughs> and her name was Jennifer. And he just replied, I'm trying Jennifer. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I will use that that phrase often in my life. I'm trying, Jennifer. <laughs> Jesse Ventura is 73. The body. Barry Melrose is 68. If alive, he's alive, right? Barry Melrose. We'll yeah, look into that. I, I, I think we would know if he were. John he... Stallworth is 72. Blake, who's John Stallworth? Steelers wide receiver. Okay. okay. Impressive. This guy. Barry Trotz is 62. <laughs> NHL HBO show, right? Uh, he once got mad at me. I think I remember that. Because I was wearing a um, medieval knight <laughs> outfit, uh, and I walked into the locker room to, to ask him questions. <laughs> and he thought that was just a, too much of a joke now, for the sacred game of hockey. Here comes the Sir Kristen of Cleveland. Was that... The same night as Nate, or was that a different... What's Nate was Nate? 1920s. What's Yule? Nate? Nate Yule. Oh, dude, you're mixing up so many things. That's what I'm saying. It's the same He's, sport. Yeah, yeah, but I Nate just Nate Yule is a different city. That, well, Buff, that's what Buffalo? I'm saying. Is I wasn't around for any of this, so I'm just trying yeah, to figure no. out like how many different times you got yelled at by hockey No, Nate officials. Yule was a guy who, a PR director who yelled at Gribble for doing 1920s reporter guy in uh, Washington, Pat. Okay. And I believe uh, Barry Trotz was here, and I had to wear a Medieval Knights uh, outfit to ask questions to players after the game. With groups? With groups. Okay. And that's when I met uh, Jerry from the Mucky Duck. Oh, nice. Uh, Barry Trotz was in Washington. That's a part of the reason I'm confused. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, did you yeah have you're right on that, that show. Did you have a sword <laughs> or just the outfit? I don't think I had a sword. <laughs> no. They made you check weapon. that at the... <laughs> A former Major League Baseball player named Peter O'Brien is 34 mm. today. So apparently he was a spare, played for the Diamondbacks and maybe somewhere else. Not related to Pete O'Brien. <laughs> uh, but he was on the birthday list today, and I was looking just so I researched him, yes. Um, but he did somewhere along the line say, you know what? I realized the heir of my former's ways. I should be called <laughs> Peter. Because if you say my name... Real fast, it doesn't yeah. reflect kindly upon me. Yeah. It's like Brian got an unfortunate nickname. Right. <laughs> That's old Brian down at the uh, yeah. the end of the street. He lives with his mom. He's mm -hmm. a little silly, a little funny. He's Coaches he's, kids' teams, but he doesn't have a... <laughs> 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 Coaches youth sports, yeah. Did we, I, he, I was talking about that with some friends the other That's day. That's Pete O'Brien. Like, did you have, like, get it? I can't remember if we talked about this the other day or not, but did, did you have that, like, as a kid? The one funny guy in the neighborhood? Like, did you yeah, ever that's play what they were called. He's, uh, he's just funny. funny. He's funny like that. Did you right. ever play for a guy who didn't have a kid on the team? Baseball, I think so. basketball, whatever. Yeah, I think it was football. But this guy really, you could tell he wanted to be a, he thought he was an NFL coach. He's, Vince Lombardi in trading? Yeah. I can't believe my parents let me do that. I can't believe in the 70s there were people that were just, you know, it was known. My parents encouraged me to sleep over. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be crying like, I don't want to. I hate Brian. <laughs> It'll be good for you, Danny. I don't want to sleep at Brian's house. Yeah. <laughs> Ariana Huffington is 74. Uh... Uh, Carl the, Mouth. Actor Terry yeah. O'Quinn is 72. Don't know it. He's from Lost. He's the bald guy on Lost. Oh, Smoke Monster. And uh, <laughs> Hawaii Five-0 as well. Uh, let's see. Forrest Whitaker is 63. Ah, oh, Kavanaugh. I know him as Jefferson. Mm-hmm. From Fast Times at Ridgemont High. He didn't have many lines. What's Kavanaugh? Fifth season. Shield. Okay. But his best is when uh, they walk up to him. Hey, nice car. 
Fifth. I think it was the fifth. Don't, 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 don't fuck with I think uh, fourth with season was Glenn Close. I like the fact that you really know Fast Times. <laughs> I watched some of it the other day. Excellent. It was on. It was I was channel surfing and it was on. Okay. So I watched some of it. Anyways, fifth season was. Spicoli was wrecks the car and he's like, "My dad's got tools. I can fix this." He's a TV repair man. He's got the ultimate <laughs> set of tools. <laughs> because TV repair tools. <laughs> You know, synonymous with auto, <laughs> auto repair auto restoration. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie Griffin is 56. Man, he's got a couple specials that absolutely hit. Oh, yeah? Like stand-up? Yeah. Undercover Brother, great movie. Fantastic. How old? 56. Mm-hmm. I would have thought older. I would have thought way older. Yeah. And uh, Brigitte Nielsen, 61. Flavor, flavor, Flav. Arnold? No, Sly. Yeah, Rocky. Oh, okay. She was uh, <laughs> Drago's wife. Oh, that's that right. Movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Born on this day, now dead. She was in Playboy, too. <laughs> Rembrandt. Don't even ask me. There's no- <laughs> How do they know? Don't even ask me. Would you be surprised I, I, I to know that Rembrandt... A, a century. That Rembrandt actually watched the first season of uh, Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. No, I don't know. He probably lived in... But again, that's a name that you would have said Picasso. I yeah, would have said, yeah, yeah, he was probably Rembrandt's friend. Yeah. But apparently, they lived in uh, hundreds of years apart. When's Rembrandt? Does anybody know? It appears to be 17, like the 17th century. 50, yeah. okay. 17th century? Yeah. Yeah. Died in 1669. Oh, wow. That was 100 years off, Jake. No, you weren't. You well, said I thought 17th he was in, century. I, mean, I said 1750 is oh. what I thought. He was relevant. Died on this day in 1542. Lisa Del Giancoto. She was painted by Leonardo da Vinci. She's the real Mona Lisa. Hmm. And I've seen it. In person? Up close. It's That's small, right? right? It Ish. is pretty small, yeah. yeah. Unimpressive. Did you, you throw like prefer a top pancake shot? batter on it to <laughs> I, I protest something? I did think it was impressive <laughs> that somebody was able to throw a bowl of soup at it handcuff yourself to it somehow <laughs> yeah <laughs> with a cinder block <laughs> um died on this day in 1940 robert wadlow he was the tallest person in recorded history eight foot 11 yes yeah everyone had that book how old was he like 24 like really young right did you say uh 20, i didn't i don't have his age at death here but he had a massive pituitary situation. Didn't he actually have the uh, double double record for a while? <laughs> in the WNBA, yeah, when he was right three. in the WNBA because <laughs> he did what they allege that anybody can do, right? Just oh, now I'm a woman. Yep. That poor bastard. 1974 on this day died Christine Chubbuck. Okay, can we go back to Wadlow real quick, please? So. Look at the growth chart by age. You know, <laughs> it's insane. You know how uh, I've told you before, like how funny I find the basketball reference nicknames, because usually you've never heard of them. Mm-hmm. This uh, Robert Wadlow Wikipedia page, it's got his born day, his died day, and then other names: the Gentle Giant, okay, the tallest man who ever lived. <laughs> it's not first a one's better. First one's better. It's not a nickname. The Illinois Giant. Not a good one. No, because like if you're the tallest person in the world, then why would you? You're global, right, man. Yeah, why not? Be, yeah, the uh, Main Street Main Giants. Street like Giant. Yeah. Why do you have? Why to be- limit yourself to a, one state? <laughs> well, maybe that was when he was younger, and then they kind of figured out. Wait, there's nobody else bigger. He's the world giant. Perhaps. It's just a interesting Wikipedia note. Anyway, Christine Chubbuck, I've never heard you mention her. She died on this day in 1974. She was a TV news reporter who committed suicide on TV, live on TV at the age of 29. Yeah, I've uh, seen the video. That's not surprising at all. I would it's have guessed super, that. super, funny, super <laughs> unsettling. Mm. But it, yeah, is it on Live Leak? It is on Live Leak. I don't think Live Leak exists anymore. Well, it used to be on Live Leak. Is it on Pornhub? It, I. I, Greg Abbott would not let me know. Mm-mm. You have to go to different places. Yep. Um, but she, like, does a whole intro. Like, uh, 
we're here today to watch me die. Pretty much. That kind of thing? Mm-hmm. And then takes out a gun and... Side of the head, right? Yeah. 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 While doing the news. We got to hand it to her. She is being mentioned to, you know, had she just jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge. Probably not, not making mentioning this. that today. Yeah. yeah. Like she did something that was truly unique and has stood the test of time. Yeah. Dang. These, these were her final words. <laughs> In keeping with the WXLT practice of presenting the most immediate and complete reports of local blood and guts news, TV40 presents what is believed to be the first in television and living color and exclusive coverage of an attempted suicide. And then she did it. And then she wrote her own bulletin for the next story about how she did it. Respect. Like they had to read that? Like she had it written for him. I I don't know that they read it, but she definitely wrote it. Yeah, it's it's highly graphic. What do you think about her hair? Oh, now we're looking at TV again. <laughs> and uh, died on this day in 2003, <laughs> Tech Shram. And on this day in 2006, Robert H. Brooks. Yeah, we all know that name. We hail Robert H. Brooks, the founder of Hooters of America. <laughs> <laughs> Puppet!